Hello and welcome back to another trucking video. Let's get up and get on with the day. And of course, the first thing I do is make myself a cup of tea before pulling the curtains back and revealing this beautiful sunny day. Parking in laybys isn't all bad. And once I'm ready to go, I can put my car to work and go out and do my daily checks. My truck would still be nice and clean with this weather, but unfortunately, I had to go into a quarry yesterday that used recycled water to wash the trucks as they went out. Well, I've woke up to an absolutely beautiful day today. I'm tipping at Yeovil. I've brought this load down from Hull and I'm not very far away. So let's go and hopefully there'll be nobody in front of me. We shall see. I've started a bit later than I would have liked to have started, but I didn't finish until late last night and I've had to have my daily rest of nine hours off. Luckily, I'm only around 10, 15 minutes away. As I drive around the corner to the mill, I can see that there is one weighing out. So I reverse back up and let him pass before I go onto the weighbridge. I could also see another truck on the pit, so I'm pretty sure I have a little wait. Once I'm on the weighbridge, I can go into the mill and get myself weighed in. I've only got to wait for one on the pit and they are tipping now. So it's not too bad really. I should be out of here pretty quickly. Um, the farm where I'm going next isn't very far away so I rang him last night and just gave him the heads up that I didn't really know what time I was going to be there because it depended on how much I got held up here actually it was all right because he said that he's going to be there from half past seven and he's got quite a few lorries coming in and out so he'll be there for a while it's turned out not too bad it's always hard when you know that you've got an early tip and the next place isn't very far away or you're going to be there potentially quite early but you're not really sure you've got that window between sort of like half six and nine that you don't really know if you're going to be there or not at least with this i'm not gonna give such a vague answer because farmers have so much to do as well as what we do so it's always nice to give them a, an exact time but actually today it's worked out that he's going to be there this morning to load quite a few lorries anyway I think that's time for another cup of tea. It's not long before I'm backing onto the pit and getting myself set up to tip. First things first, I get the grain sock on and I do roll it up a bit because I know that this product can be a little bit sticky. Once I get the go ahead from the mail staff that I can tip, I lift the body up and I can let the grain hatch open. But nothing comes out, so I lure it back down to investigate. And this is what I find, a big lump of wheat stillers that just does not want to come out. It's completely stuck together, so my only option is to open the tailboard whilst the body is down and let a little bit out. Once I open the tailboard, I find that the product is stuck together like a big brick inside the trailer. So there's only one thing for it, I'm going to have to get my shovel and try and shovel out as much as I possibly can. I shovel out a pocket of product as much as I can from the ground, leaving a gap between that and the tailboard. I close the tailboard up and I'm hoping that when I lift the body up, the product will shift and break up under its own weight. And lucky for me, it has worked. It's not brilliant, but at least there's product coming out into the pit. I may need to repeat this process again, but I'm happy as long as it's coming out and keeping the pit full. And just like normal, I seem to get myself covered in dirt. It seems to be flowing quite well now, but I need to stand at the side and control what is coming out as there seems to be some quite big lumps in it. I've now got eight ton off and it's still flowing, which is good news. I'm going to still need to watch for lumps and try to break up the lumps that are on the top of the pit so that the rest of the product can flow down. I fold my sock up and put it away as it's quite clear that I'm not gonna need it on this tip. Look at the size of these lumps. It takes about an hour to get the trailer empty and once I've got as much out as possible, I need to bring the body down and open the tailboard. There is quite a bit in there still. So once I've opened the tailboard, I can lift the body up very slowly, making sure that I don't overfill the pit. 
Once I think it's empty, I'll go to the back and just check to see how the body looks inside. I'm actually really impressed how clean it looks considering the job I had getting the product out, but I still give it a sweep round anyway. After all that, I have wheat distillers everywhere in my shoes, in my sleeves, in my pockets, so I give myself a good clean up before getting in my nice clean truck. And then I pull onto the weigh bridge to weigh out. Let's go and get my ticket and get out of here. Once I've got my ticket and weighed out, I can get back in the truck and I can go to the next farm, which is only about 20 to 30 minutes away. Luckily, I meet some cars at the top of the lane where it's a bit wider, but then I meet a smaller truck and he goes up on the verge, which I personally would not have done because I would have worried about sinking, but it looks like he knows quite a bit about turf looking at his load. It's not long before I arrive at the farm and as I pull through, I'm trying to work out who has been loaded and who still needs to load. Or worst case scenario, maybe both of them still need to be loaded and I am third in the queue. I'm also trying to work out where he wants the trucks to load so that when it's my turn, I know where to park. And it looks like good news. It looks like Martin has already loaded and it's only Bayford to load. And I'm also aware now of where I need to park to be loaded. The team here are loading pretty quickly, so it's not long before I get my chance to get loaded. And once Bayford's pull off, I can get into the position that he was in. So I've got my passport and it's all in date and everything. I've got my sticker. I'm just going to fill out my part of it and I'm being loaded up as we speak. So happy days. I have heard that the place that I'm tipping at has got a pit that's broken down. Normally they run two pits, but apparently they're down to one pit. And the chap that loaded before me with the yellow Bayford's truck, Peter, he is on his way down there as well. So he will be in front of me. Um, so <laughs> we'll see, I might be lucky, I might not be. I might only have to wait for him, who knows. Once I'm loaded, I can put my sheet on and head towards Clumpton, which is just over an hour away. I just need to get down this lane and it should be plain sailing all the way back to Clumpton. I take the route up the A303 onto the A358 and then onto the M5. But unfortunately, just after I pass the Tiverton Junction, I come to a standstill. Even if I had spotted the slowdown in traffic just before the junction, the only route across to Clumpton is through a weight limit. Once I've stopped, it takes about an hour to get up to Clumpton, but I finally make it and get sampled and weighed in. And then I get a phone call from the office. They've just cancelled them all. It's coming out of Wilkeshire Grey now. Oh, right. right. Up at um, Stonehenge, so uh, uh, refresh your port and have a quick butcher's of it. Right. Once I'm on the weigh bridge, I go and find out which pit they want me to tip on and then I go and find a parking space to wait for the pit. Well, I've been in luck and luckily they have both pits up and running, fingers crossed. So Chris is on the pit at the moment and then it will be me. So I haven't actually got too long to wait. I have had a phone call from Keith saying that my next load has changed slightly. So I'm going to Wiltshire Grain instead of Cannington Grain. I fill out my paperwork for the next load. The load is still being tipped in the same place, but the collection location is different, meaning that I have to go further. It's not long before Chris is off the pit, so I quickly get myself on the pit. And once I have the okay to tip from the mill staff, I put my body up and then I can open the grain hatch and start tipping. Well, that was nice and easy compared to earlier. This load only takes around half an hour to tip, so it's not long before I'm taking my grain sock off and opening the tailboard to let the last little bit out. 
Then all I need to do is give it a good sweep out, close the tailboard and sweep up after myself. Once everything's packed away, neat and tidy, I can drive back around onto the Weybridge. My ticket and it's off to Wiltshire Grey. So I head down the M5, up the 358, onto the 383 and I'm looking out for Ollie Bloggs but unfortunately I've missed him by about an hour doing his big charity combine run from John O'Groats to Land's End. It's not long before I'm at the grain store and I pull round onto the Weybridge for empty lorries and then go and take my ticket into the lady on the Weybridge. She tells me that I'm loading under the spout that I passed on my way in so I head back under that spout. She also told me that they are quite short staffed so I have a little bit of a wait before I can get loaded. Well that's me all weighed in so now all I need to do is wait for somebody to come and load me. I don't think it takes too long to load so hopefully we'll be on our way up north soon. I'm loading under a spout here and it seems to be taking quite a while. Um, I reckon probably about a ton of minutes and I need 28, just over 28 tonnes, so I think I might be here a little while. They've told me that there is a one tonne runoff, so when I am one tonne away from being loaded, I give a little beep. Then I just need to wait for that one tonne to come through onto the trailer, and then I can move off onto the Weybridge for loaded trailers. I get sampled and then get a Weybridge ticket for weighing out and then I can head north to the mill. It will take me around four hours to get up there and there is no easy way from here and I need to cut across country. I head up through Pusey and Marlborough towards Swindon. And then unfortunately, as I'm climbing up a big hill, the lights turn red on the crossing, so I have to stop. I get myself ready to pull the fully loaded truck up the hill, hoping that she will go. Luckily, she pulled off nicely with not one little spin on the wheels. For some reason, it always feels like a big personal struggle to get a lorry up a hill fully loaded. Once I get up to Swindon, I take the 419 and the 417 across to the M5. By this point, I am running out of time on my four and a half hours, so I pull into Strencham Services and get my stuff together for a shower stopped in Strencham Services northbound and I try to avoid this services as much as possible when I need a shower because the showers are, hmm, well, I've only been in there once because that's the only time that they have actually been available and the one time that I did use it, it was absolutely disgusting, really, really disgusting. And I don't think they're the safest of showers either. They're out in their own block and it's, I don't like it at all, but needs mass. I'm gonna go for it, see what it's like. If it's that bad, I just won't use it. So that's me back in the lorry, no shower. They have about four men's showers in there and then there's the unisex shower which is basically being used for the men so i can't have a shower this is exactly why i hate stopping here because i can never ever get in that shower might as well put some tea in tonight i have a lovely chicken and prawn paella very nice but it's time to go as I get to Birmingham I hit some traffic but that's nothing unusual this spot is notorious for slow traffic once I get through Birmingham I realize that I do have enough time to stop in another services and just try to get a shower as I didn't get one yesterday I'm really hoping this is going to be worth pulling in for. It's not very 
Even though the shower wasn't amazing, I feel a million times better just for having that shower. Getting a shower can really make or break your day as a driver. I'm also not very far away now, so I don't have far to go. It's quarter past eight and I'm finally parked up. The best thing about doing this load is I can actually park at the mill that I'm tipping at in the morning and I'm in the queue ready to go. So by the looks of it, I am third in the queue. They open at six, so I'll set my alarm and be up for six o'clock. I just have one little job to do before I finish and that is just putting some ad blue in because I have not got enough to last me tomorrow, so I might as well do it now. So I take the cap for the ad blue off and go and get the cans of ad blue out of my side compartment on my trailer. I fix the hose onto the can and then I just need to let it trickle into the tank. A lot of people have been asking what AdBlue is for and it's basically there to reduce the emissions of a diesel engine. I'm going to make myself a nice little overteen and then I'm going to probably edit some videos and go to bed.